just join us and watch this slideshow of Yogananda's life that we were able to just uh, experience and share together. Um, it sets the stage just perfectly for coming into this next uh, conversation or this next segment that we're going to have um, today, which is talking about World Brotherhood colonies and Yogananda's emphasis on coming together and living communally in the ways that we are able to do at Ananda it's with so many of us. Um, but before we get to World Brotherhood colonies, I wanted to just come back and speak a little bit about Yogananda. Um, everything that we've been able to discuss today, every segment, every conversation, every talk, every video that we've shared, just so perfectly is expressing the essence of this next statement. But Paramahansa Yogananda is the avatar for this age, the age of Dwapara Yuga, the age of energy, and the way that he expressed these teachings fits so perfectly and it's so timely for what is needed right now on the planet, which of course you can see where I'm going to end will be World Brotherhood Colonies. And as I think about Yogananda, the first thing that comes to my mind is his heart, is love and devotion. And the second thing that comes to my mind is power. Yogananda was a force of power as each of these avatars that we share in this line of um, gurus that I have behind me and all of the avatars that we share from all of the different religions that we discuss and talk about. Power and energy and magnetism, they are forces in the world and they come with that vibration and that intention to revolutionize our own consciousness. Asha was just sharing it in her talk about Sanatana Dharma and this idea of coming with all of that power to spark the revolution. And um, Shanti even spoke about it this morning. If we can revisit all the way back up to uh, the talk about Kriya Yoga, where is that revolution actually happening? It's not happening out there. It's happening inside. It's happening in our spines. Um, I've been working on a project uh, the last couple of days that is culminating this evening with a few of uh, my friends here. And one of the great joys of the project was that I was able to go back and take a look at all of these old photos from Ananda in this early, uh, the late 60s and the early 70s. And you can see that spirit of world brotherhood, which Yogananda says at the garden party, which was just referenced for us. Uh, Thousands of youths must go north, south, east, and west to establish small colonies around the, uh, across the globe based on the ideals of simple living and high thinking, which bring greatest happiness. Simple living and high thinking, he says, these words are imprinted in the ether. And they start, just as Asha was just talking about, on that causal level, on that ether level, that energetic level, until they come and they manifest for each one of us in our lives in this tangible world. And as I was looking, or I should say in this material world, and as I was looking at all of these photos of smiling faces of young uh, devotees on farms and living in teepees and sort of feeling, I'm sure the experience of it wasn't as idyllic as uh, it may seem in those black and white photos, but I was thinking about how idyllic that is and I had the thought, oh, if only, if only that were the situation that, my, that I had for my life, if only that was what my life could look like, maybe I could go deeper. Maybe I could find that spark of spirituality, that depth of knowing God even more intensely. And immediately I thought, ah, oh, that's exactly what Yogananda came to discuss when he was talking about the power of world brotherhood colonies and the reason that we need them. It's not the if onlys or the what ifs or the maybe next year, maybe 10 years, maybe next lifetime. It's about being able to spiritualize our lives right now, right here in this moment. The outer context doesn't matter. Of course, it plays a role. We know environment is stronger than will willpower. So of course, the context of the environment, the demographics we're living in, they play a role, but they do not influence and they do not determine the depth of spirituality and the depth of attunement that we are able to find, that we are able to um, receive. It's all about our internal spiritual uh, experience, which is why I can come back to what Chanti was saying this morning. Where, what, where is that revolution happening? It's not happening on the farm in 1975, living in a teepee and dedicating my life to God. It's happening right here in my spine, as it is in each one of your spines. On my wall in my um, apartment, 
I have a friend who painted three pictures for me, and um, I picked three phrases that I enjoyed and that I liked, and two of them were banit banit banjai, which in, on our, in our lineage um, we attribute with, I believe, Lahiri Mahashaya, but I may have it wrong, which means doing, doing, one day done. Banit banit banjai. And the other phrase that I picked of the three, the second one, was eventually, eventually, why not today, which is credited with Sri Peshwar. And the reason that both of these felt so impactful and important to me is because it brings us back to that moment where I could look at that photo of what Ananda Village looked like in 1975 and say, ah, oh, if only, if only my life looked like that, perhaps I could become more spiritual, perhaps I could find God more quickly. But again, that revolution that Yogananda brought, that power and that force, he came to revolutionize spirituality in the West. World Brotherhood colonies are not about waiting for tomorrow. They're about coming together right now in this moment. And the reason colonies are so essential in that is because attunement is such a fine, nuanced um, experience, that ability to open our hearts and to receive God's love, to receive that power and that consciousness, it's so easy to get drawn out into the world. Yogananda uses the example of a little sapling, which we build a fence around to protect it from um, animals and little critters who, can, uh, you know, who could destroy it until it's strong enough to stand on its own. And of course, this is the, the power of spiritual community that ability to be blanketed, protected, and enclosed in above of like-minded souls who are also there to revolutionize that spiritual awakening within themselves. Everything that Yogananda came to bring to us, it's difficult to do when we're out there on our own. But when we can come together, magic can happen. The story is somewhat tangential, but comes back to the main point, and it will be the, uh, I'll, leave it, I'll leave you with it today. Um, as I said, I've been working on this project uh, for uh, something that's happening later on tonight. And I spent the first three days of the week, Monday through Wednesday, on my own working on this project, just hours all day in front of my computer, compiling things, creating um, images, and finding the story, and writing the story. Um, and I had help along the way a little bit, but the last three days I've spent on my own. And the project was coming together really beautifully, but I knew that I needed a little bit of help from my friends, from uh, my fellow community members. And yesterday, um, two of my friends and I sat down for about 10 hours together and completed this uh, project that you'll see later on tonight. And everything that I uh, was able to do on my own, all of the images that I was able to find, I enjoyed them. They felt uplifting. They told the story that I was, that I was wanting to tell, that we were wanting to tell very well. But the moment that I brought my friends into that project and the moment we were able to work on this project together, magic happened. Everything came together just so perfectly. Because as we know, uh, Yogananda said, I uh, prefer a soul to a crowd, but I love a crowd of souls. The moment that my friends were able to come in and bring their magnetism, their attunement, and yes, also their tech skills, but most importantly, their magnetism, their attunement, their devotion, that joy, that, uh, um, that beauty, that magnetism of what we were trying to express in sharing the life of Yogananda, it just burst out even in, a, in an even greater way. It just grew exponentially, and you could feel all of that joy and all of that love. This, of course, is the power of spiritual community. We can find God on our own. We can find God by going inside and meditating and pulling uh, that energy up and down the spine. But how many lifetimes would that take? What if we can come together with a crowd of souls crying out for that same goal, protecting ourselves against all of the energy that's pulling us every which way, and say, no, I choose only thee. I choose to give my life to God. Every moment, everything that I do, every activity, every action will be a reminder of what it means to live for God alone. This is the power of spiritual community. This is the example that Yogananda brought to us as each of the gurus in our line of uh, gurus as well as avatars from every religion were coming to teach. But it's hard to do on our own. So we come together and we share that energy and we share that magnetism 
and maybe just like I experienced with this project, instead of saying eventually, eventually, why not today, we can, I'm sorry, instead of saying bonnet, no, yes, eventually, eventually, why not today, instead of putting that off and waiting for that attunement to come to us in an, uh, another moment, in five years, in 10 years, in the what if I had lived my life back in that time, what if I were able to attune myself uh, by not having to work out in the world? What if I were able to um, dedicate my life solely to meditating hours a day and not raise my family? What if we could come together and use that communal energy, that power and that magnetism to love God more deeply and to serve God in everything that we do?